Hello everyone. Excellent evening everyone. <laughs> we are high. Welcome, welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome to everyone of us. How are we? I hope we're doing great. Okay. I hope we're actually doing very great today. Um Welcome, welcome. I need to set my video right. Okay. Home alone. <laughs> Evidence and proofs of home alone. <laughs> all right. So we're all well, highly welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome to everyone of us. How is our day going? Or how have we been? All right. So today, like we know, we're looking at frozen shoulders. I've got a lot of um, people asking questions about it, and I decided to work on it. People asking, is frozen shoulder the same as arthritis? Why am I waking up and I'm having some kind of, you know, issues with my shoulder? All right. Hello, bro, peace. Brother, peace. Okay, so I can see that. Um, anyway, I might just have to take it that way today. <laughs> oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord. I think he's right enough. We'll go ahead. All right, so we're all highly welcome to this evening's broadcast. Like I said, today we're going to be looking at frozen shoulder. And um, I'll kindly ask us to help, share, share, share. I also have to be sure that my video is... Um, okay, hello, Abiodun Janet. You're welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome. How is your day? Or how is your night going? Because it's now night. <laughs> it's now night, not day. You're welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome to every one of us. Today we're going to be looking at frozen shoulder. We're going to be looking at the causes, the symptoms. And we're also going to be looking at some natural remedies for frozen shoulders okay that's what we're going to be looking at today incidentally um i'm home alone like i said so i couldn't really set up very well i'll check if it's not okay i'm going to go back there and do it right <laughs> i'm going to go back there and do it right if it's not okay let me just see this one we come along so if you join me you can greet you can just drop your greetings and then um, I can greet you back to find out how you're doing today. Share, share, share. And if you're also live, kindly help me share, share, share. Okay, over show from my table. Kindly help me share, share, share if you're live with me. Hello, Adeboy, your phone care, you're welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Okay, let me make it faster with this sharing so that we can get going so we're going to be looking at frozen shoulder we're going to be looking at the causes we're going to be looking at the stages we're going to be looking at discussing today the remedies also okay and then um, we're going to move very fast because our love us to actually end this um, broadcast on time since i have another meeting immediately after so I love us to end it on time so I can go ahead with my second meeting for the day. Hello Elizabeth Henry, you're welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, welcome. Welcome um, Elizabeth Henry, welcome Osaru Ruketi, Liliana Dako. Welcome, welcome to this evening's broadcast. So if you join me, you can still greet. So I can quickly greet us and then um, we go ahead with our broadcast today. Lillian, you're welcome. Welcome, welcome to everyone. Of course, it's Monday, the fresh week, second week actually. And I usually begin by asking people, how was last week? It's always good for you not to wait till the end of the month before you start looking at evaluating your month. 
do your daily evaluation, do your weekly evaluation, and do your monthly evaluation. It's always very, very important. And when we talk about, you remember when we started the year, we started by asking, how, what are your health goals? You also need to ask yourself today, what are your health goals? How far with your health goals? How far have you gone? For those of us who want to lose weight, how much weight have you lost? For those of us who want to sleep better, how better are you sleeping? For those of us who came in this year and they said, you know what, I'm going to start eating healthier. How much healthier are your foods and your menus this year than last year? You know, so you need to evaluate every week how your week is. And then also to ask yourself, you know, catalog of all the ailments and diseases and issues that you're having. How many of them have you been able to take good control of? So that's what you ask yourself and the evaluation you do. Like, let me give you an example. Today, I just looked at myself and I said, you know what? You need some 30 minutes break before this broadcast. So I just went and wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I just gave myself that break. Bam! I set my alarm for 8.30 and I went straight to take a nap, okay? So you need to keep asking yourself, how are you doing? What is it that is happening to you? And how can you do? Hello, Fola. You're welcome. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. So today we're looking at frozen shoulders, causes, symptoms, stages of the, uh, that it, we have, and then the natural remedies. Actually, frozen shoulders is a condition that leads to pain and stiffness of the shoulder. Pain and stiffness of the shoulder. And in medical terms, it's also known as adhesive capsulitis or shoulder contraction. Okay? Um, I can remember when my husband had that issues with his sh shoulder and then um, the, the doctor was checking him or the professor was checking him in Germany and then he was discussing with another doctor and they mentioned some of these terms, okay? So, um, shoulder, frozen shoulder actually occurs when the sleeve that surrounds the shoulder joints, this inside, okay? Inside the sleeve that surrounds the shoulder joint, which is known as capsule, becomes swollen inside and thickened when that sleeve becomes swollen and thickened it's actually unclear why this happens nobody will really pinpoint and say it's because of so so and so that that is happening so the shoulder of course you know when we talk about the shoulder joint here it's a ball and socket joint okay when we talk about ball and socket joints that's how our shoulder is okay and the end of your upper arm bone which is called the humerus sits in contact with the socket of your shoulder blade which is called the scapula okay so that's how your shoulder and your your shoulder um, is the bone is thank you for the thumbs up thank you for the love and welcome abimbola abaje welcome welcome thank you thank you thank you ma for the thumbs up so that's how your shoulder is so when we talk about when we say that you're having frozen shoulder that's when you're having pains and you're having stiffness you can't move your hands you can't move your arms as you know far as you want to go so for so many people you won't be able to you know, do some of these things that I'm doing. You won't be able to. Some people say when is in stage one or two when it's, you know, painful. They are not even able to lift their hands because of the pains. Okay, so we're going to be looking at all those stages and all the things that happens with it. So causes of, um, if we look at causes of frozen shoulder, just note that frozen shoulder occurs when flexible tissue you know that surrounds the shoulder joint all those tissues and muscles known as the capsule like i have said becomes inflamed and thickened when they become inflamed and thickened and then um, like i said i people science have not really found out that this is the real reason why it's happening like that okay hello nonye ono and dare you're welcome excellent evening to you all welcome to this evening's broadcast welcome welcome all right, so um, the f the increase the some things will increase increase the risk, even though uh, science will not be able to say that this is the reason why it occurs. 
but so, some things would actually lead to one having frozen shoulder some of the things are maybe if you've already had injury on your soldier on your um, shoulder or if you've had any form of surgery okay and the injury didn't heal like when my husband was having that issue he was having with his tender the professor warned and said wherever you want to go and do this operation just be very very sure that the healing process is intact that the problem with the operation is not the operation itself but the healing process aftermath of the operation that that's what actually is the real issue hello chibis and i you're welcome cynthia d marble you're welcome ola tokumba debra you're welcome chidirim you're welcome so some of other things that could increase the risk apart from maybe shoulder injury or shoulder surgery is diabetes you know people with diabetes or people with pre-diabetes are prone more to having a um, frozen shoulder okay and then also people who have the what they call the do put contraction you know it's a condition where small lumps of ticking tissues form in the hands and in the fingers and also generally other health conditions like heart disease and strokes all this can actually cause um, one to have a um, frozen shoulder brother peace wow. you know all this can cause one to have frozen shoulder so I'm going to be sharing some facts with us come and help me put on this studio light I'm going to be sharing some facts with us concerning frozen shoulders okay so i'm going to share about, about four or five or six sections of um, facts about it so the first one the shoulder capsule is fully stretched when you raise your arms above your head okay that's when we say that your shoulder capsules are fully stretched when you when you raise your your hands above your head and then hands down as a small pot when your arm is lowered okay so that's when you say you have a full range, you know, of your shoulder arm movement. All right. So, so but in frozen shoulder, bands of scar tissues form inside the shoulder capsule, like I've said, causing it to thicken, swell, and tighten. So first of all, they begin to get thicker, then they will swell up, and then they will tighten, okay? And then this means there is less space for your upper arm bone in the joint. And then it will now limit movement. That's why when some people want to move, they will say, ah, you know, they, even if um, it's not paining them, because at certain stages, maybe like stage three, the pain will reduce drastically. But still, the, the people will say, ah, this thing is going now, but I still can't raise my arm. I still can't move my arm as far as, you know, I want to. Because of the condition you know the thing is inside the pain is all, all only just telling you that this is what is happening to you the pain does not mean that it's um, going or when when you have less pain it doesn't mean that it's going so when it's thick and then it's swollen and then it tightens then it will make it very difficult for you to move your arms like most people who get frozen shoulders are between ages 40 to 60 that's the you know the most um frequent people that will have frozen shoulder is between ages 40 to 60 and again it's more common in women than men frozen shoulder is more common in women than men hello Ejo for comfort you're welcome to this evening's broadcast welcome Odua Kakenem. good evening happy to be connected thank you thank you thank you for connecting Odua. i'm happy to also have you here all right, so you, uh, most people with frozen shoulder eventually get better, actually with time, even without treatment, okay? But if the pain is mild or much, it's better for you to handle that pain so that you can avoid secondary diseases arising like high blood pressure. Remember I told you, when you have pains that are much and you allow them to get elongated, to move over to other diseases like high blood pressure. So you need appropriate treatment which can help reduce the pain and also improve the movement in your shoulder until it heals, okay? Remember that it's what the body gives it that will heal it. 
it's giving the body what it needs the body now takes in the nutrient it needs it will now begin to heal it gradually if you're having frozen shoulder and if you eat enough diet or some of the things we're going to be mentioning later during this broadcast if you're having um frozen shoulder you need to watch your diet you need to watch your lifestyle you need to do exercises and of course you need supplementation these are the four ways generally you can handle that we're going to be looking at them in detail so you give your sh your shoulder or you give your body the nutrients it needs so that it will be able to heal itself okay wow all right so another um, thing i would like to share with us today is the symptoms what are some of the symptoms of frozen shoulder what are some of the symptoms of frozen shoulder? Hello, Ngozi Arayo. Welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, Oluwa Shemu, to this evening's broadcast. Oh, yo, it's good morning for you. Ola Oju, where are you calling in from? That is morning now. It's really 8 p.m. So where are you calling in from? That is morning. Because in U.S. it's already afternoon for them. I really love to know, Oluwa. I would really love to know, Oluwa Shemu, okay? So, symptoms. Pain and persistent stiffness in the shoulder joints are the two main symptoms of frozen shoulders, okay? Pain and, and really persistent stiffness. You know, sometimes some people will have stiffness in some parts of their body when they just wake up in the morning because you've, you've been in one place and if you're already having some kind of inflammation, the inflammation can cause one of the places to be stiff. But if it's persistence then you need to watch it because it means something is happening so this makes it very painful and difficult for you to carry out the full range of your normal shoulder movement like i said okay see my arms i can move the full range like the 360 degrees in our time you know so that means my shoulder is very okay all right so if you cannot move your shoulder any of your shoulder whichever one right or left you know full rage then you need to begin to watch to find out what is happening to you so you may also find it difficult to perform everyday tasks such as bathing so people's own really really stiff and swollen and picking that even to pick up water bowls to bathe and to scrub parts of their body is really difficult and some people it also affects their driving they are not able to drive again the way they would want to drive and some other people even sleeping comfortably becomes a problem for them okay so symptoms may also vary from mild with little interface to daily activities to severe where it may not even be possible for you to move your shoulders at all that's for some for some people is really as bad as that okay and then those are the symptoms of frozen shoulder okay hello Eunice Adelaide you're welcome we're going to be looking at the the stages okay there are three stages okay the symptoms of frozen shoulder usually progress gradually or over a number of months and for some people years okay and there are three separate stages to that condition which can also be sometimes difficult for you to distinguish okay is as if one is you know is interwoven you won't really be able to say so the symptoms may also vary greatly and they may also you know resemble it depends on the person the symptoms you get from patient a is not the same symptoms you get from another patient that is suffering from frozen shoulders okay all right so stage one there are three stages like i told us i'm going to describe those stages to us now and i remember why how i always say prevention is better than cure prevention is cheaper is safer is actually better than cure so instead of even allowing it to come up the best thing for you is to make sure you handle it on time okay handle it on time so during stage one it's often referred to as the freezing stage your shoulder will start to ache and then it will become very painful when you're reaching out to take things you know you you will be feeling some kind of pains from time to time but anytime you stretch your hand to take something ah, ah, it will be as if you should pull back the hands okay and then the pain is often worse at night if you're on stage one of frozen shoulder it's often worse at night and then also when you lie down on that affected side of the shoulder it becomes very very painful okay and this stage can last between two to nine months depending on the individual and other factors okay concerning the person's life so stage two stage two is often known as the frozen phase 
the stage one is the freezing stage the stage two is the frozen stage okay so in stage two your shoulder may become increasingly stiff but the pain does not usually get worse and it may even decrease at that stage too but it becomes stiffer it might not really be paining you but you'll find out that the range of movement is also further reduced okay so your shoulder muscles may then start to waste away slightly because they are not being used so that's what happens to stage two because most of the time because the pain is reduced you try to use it but you find out that you can't actually move it much so you, what happens to most people is that they reduce the use like if it's happening in their left shoulder they will reduce the use of the um, the hands their left hand and then they will be using more of their right hand so that will now make more um, the right the left shoulder to become more sedentary and also reduce the movement on that shoulder so and then the atrophy of disuse wastage will now begin and this stage can also last between four to twelve months depending on the individual that is happening to and then now comes stage three hello kate kate how are you all the way from ghana you're welcome welcome to this evening's broadcast welcome welcome so stage three is the towing stage it's called the towing stage okay during this period you will gradually regain some movement in your shoulder the pain will begin to fade although it may also reoccur from time to time as the stiffness is also easing and um, although you may not regain full movement of your shoulder you will be able to carry out more tasks at this stage three and it can last from five months to so many years that's why some people will say ah for three years i've not been able to actually move this my shoulder as much as i can so those are the stages i've already told us the symptoms it's not um, a deadly disease but it just make, uh, makes your um, life miserable for some people especially people who do a lot of work with their hands that have to do a lot of physical work with their hands like tailors like people who are cooks drivers people who have to drive themselves even if you're not a driver but you have to drive yourself to work you're not able because of course when you're driving turning your steering and things like that it can affect your daily activities actually so we're going to be looking at the risk factor so you'll find out what could lead to it remember i said scientists have not been able to pinpoint to say this is exactly why it happens but there are many risk factors that could you know lead to one having having it hello welcome welcome Akeju, you're welcome to this evening's broadcast. Welcome, Rosaline. Welcome, Grace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rosaline. Thank you for thanking me. Okay, so, um, some of these factors uh, include one, like I've said, age and gender. Remember, I told you between ages 40 to 60, those are most people suffer from it men or women between those um, ages 40 to 60, and then women. The condition is more in women than in men so age and gender is one of the risk factors the second risk factor is previous shoulder injury or surgery like i also said initially when i was you know starting off the broadcast frozen shoulder can sometimes develop after a shoulder or arm injury such as fracture or after having surgery to your shoulder area that's even one of the reasons why my husband ran away he said whoa i'm not going to do any <laughs> any operation of any type because when god has made something perfect if you go and carry knife and cut it even if it's laser you're already bringing in some kind of injury okay and it can lead to other things of course it, to share my husband's testimony okay like i told us we were in germany and then um, we had issues and he couldn't actually um move his hand he was in pain he was taking several several you know, pain relief, ibuprofen from 200 to 400 to 800, tramadol and things like that. So by the time we came back and used, he used this forever move and active HA. These two supplements are for me like miracle supplements. And that's why I do anything possible in my power to make sure that as many people as possible get these two supplements. I've been giving 25% for the past two years on this supplement it's not about money i'm making it's about making people get well and the testimonies i get every day give me more you know energy more motivation 
to just remain. I can make profit from others, but these two, I just want people to get wealth. So that was what my husband used. And again, for frozen shoulder, these two are also very, very good. I can help remove the paint immediately. So, like I said, if, if one is talking about previous injury, it can also be um, partly because of a result of keeping your arms and shoulders still for a long period of time during your recovery of injuries like that okay you know when you have injuries or operation you stay in one place for a long time then your shoulder capsule may now tighten because of lack of use so because of this it's very very important for you to ignore a painful shoulder injury and always seek it's not good for you to ignore it it's always good for you to seek medical attention immediately immediately you begin to feel pain don't just say, hey, let me manage it, let me do this one, let me, months and months are going. You need to actually look into it. So the third risk factor for um, frozen shoulder is diabetes. If you have diabetes, you have a greater risk of developing a frozen shoulder. And the exact reason actually, again, is unknown. But it's estimated that people with diabetes are twice more likely to develop frozen shoulder than people without arthritis. A diabetes so if you have diabetes the symptom of frozen shoulder you know are likely to be one more severe and then it will also harder to treat remember also some of the symptoms and risk factors of diabetes okay so you're also more likely to develop the condition in both shoulders so when you have frozen shoulder and it's moving from one shoulder to the other you better be fast about checking your blood sugar immediately. In fact, immediately you start feeling it. You need to check your blood sugar. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the love. I appreciate. I appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome, Alhaja. Al Alhaja, I You're welcome. How are you, Alhaja? Well done. Bro. God bless you. All right. So you're more likely to have um, um, frozen shoulder if you have diabetes. Okay. So it's important for you, you if you have diabetes to check your your numbers your figures your blood sugar level regularly to make sure that it's under control and that you're also taking the right medication and it's doing what it's supposed to do for you so if you have diabetes the symptom of frozen shoulder are likely to be more severe and then um, for you so you need to actually work on it then there are some other thank you for the thumbs up i appreciate all the thumbs up and the love thank you thank you then some some of the other um, health conditions that might bring forth one having a um, frozen shoulder is um if you have heart disease or if someone has stroke for several reasons okay like if someone has stroke you're not moving you're not moving remember i said lack of movement of your shoulder you know and your arms can also cause frozen sh um, shoulder and when someone has stroke the person is not moving it and they also for people who have lung diseases and then people who have thyroid maybe whether it's hyperthyroidism or um, hypothyroidism these two are also risk factor people with breast cancer because of the pain in the breast and all that it's also um, a, a risk also and the inflammation that comes with um, cancer is also a risk factor for um, frozen shoulder okay so and then um, frozen shoulder can sometimes develop alongside all that shoulder condition such as if one has calcific tendonitis okay and this means small amount of calcium are deposited in the tendons of the shoulder. So if one has small amount of calcium being deposited in the tendons of the shoulder, then one can develop frozen shoulder. Also, people who have rotator cuff tear. Okay, so when someone has rotator cuff tear, it's a group of muscles that control the shoulder movement. So if one has tear in it, it can also cause frozen shoulder thank you for the thumbs up i appreciate <laughs> thank you thank you hello esther samuel you're welcome all the way from Bielsa. yeah how are you esther <laughs> ajiba they could write you also welcome god bless you so another risk factor you know we've talked about um, um some major factors that could cause it first of all i said number one could be if you 
if you're having some kind of uh, if a your age and gender and then i said number two previous injury or injury or surgery that you've had number three could be diabetes i've mentioned that that it could be and um, that if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic it could cause it and then i say number four heart diseases five like heart diseases like stroke heart diseases or also stroke five six and then seven lung diseases and then eight it could be a result of um, thyroidism either hypo or hyperthyroidism and then i talk about nine breast cancer is also a risk factor and then i also say it could also be because of some kind of shoulder conditions like um, um calcific tendonitis okay number 10 and then 11 immobility we need to really really take it very very well not moving for long periods of time can cause you know and also increase your risk of frozen shoulder remember i also said it, it's not even only just about shoulder different parts of our bodies you know there are some people who have some jobs that is a matter of reading and them um, or, or sitting in one place i talk about using fitness ball this chair now hmm? if i work for eight hours a day or i sit for eight hours a day i sit on this chair at most four that's at most the days i forget like yesterday yesterday was sunday i sat on my fitness ball maybe like almost throughout almost throughout and because the day before i i, I think i'm on saturday I forgot to sit on my fitness ball and then I was having some kind of meeting that I couldn't use it. So I noticed it. So by Sunday yesterday, I had to do more sitting on my feet on my fitness ball than here. This today again, I've sat more on my fitness ball than on this chair. And why? Because when you're on your fitness ball, your, your body is trying to get the balance. So it's moving. Your thigh is in a slow and steady movement or differential movements because it's not the ball is, is a circle okay so it's the same with your shoulder and that's why if you go down my page i've taught us a lot about stretches and i said it that i think three or three saturdays ago i did some stretches you can do for people who are teachers who work in the bank who sit a lot i've done some kind of you know stretches you can just sit down and do so that you can move the upper part of your body and even the lower part of your body because immobility is one very very risk factor and you know most common factors for people who work in the office of frozen shoulder and this can even also happen to people who are sick in the hospital when people are sick in the hospital or bed um, on bed rest they sit or lie down for a long time so they don't move all right so if one is wants to know how to know it maybe from the medical perspective diagnosis of a frozen shoulder you need to see your doctor if you think you're having a frozen shoulder or if you have persistent shoulder pain that limits your range of movement you need to go for medical attention immediately because the earlier the diagnosis and the treatment the better and then it will help to prevent long-term stiffness and pain in your shoulder joint so the earlier you treat it the better for you the earlier you treat it the better for you or um, you know that sickle cell somebody is asking can sickle cell um, disease be a factor yes it can because you know sickle cell is an autoimmune disease and when you have autoimmune disease it can actually cause anything and inflammation comes it can be in all those the crises they have can be um through any reason generally people who have sickle cell have issues with their bones have issues with their muscles and different types so it could also be a risk factor okay i cage you oh as i said thanks so much for the forever forever supplements that i recommended for her that she see changes now god bless you and thank you for testifying here okay thank you Asia, I really, really appreciate this. And I thank God, like I said, that's my passion. I want people to be healthy. I want middle age men and women to be healthy because this is the prime time when we are supposed to actually work to finish up and retire in style, okay? We need to retire in style. And we are not supposed to be sick at this period. Because for me, I'm already thinking about my retirement plan. I'm already putting things in place about my retirement plan. So if I get sick now, 
it's going to actually disturb me. All my children are away, married, having their children, working, or my last child is in the university, almost coming out, okay? So I, I'm home alone with my husband. So this is the time we are supposed to enjoy ourselves. This is the time we are supposed to enjoy our, our companionship and plan for our retirement in a grand way. So that we'll be able to stay together and travel on. And that reminds me, you know, if you're thinking about your retirement plan, I have a good retirement plan for you because this 2022, I'm raising 100 global influencers. I'm raising 100 men and women who will use their hobbies, their talents, their skills, their education, what they have gained all through these years we've gained a lot those of us we and we've used it to work in government parastatas work in some private companies now it's time for you to work for yourself these five to ten years you want to retire use it to work for yourself so that by the time you retire you you will have passive income you know i used to tell people when if you're in a government parastata maybe you're a civil servant you're going to vacate that seat one day or the other and when you're vacating, you're not going to say, um, here's my third child, come and sit on this chair. You have to pack your bag of baggages and leave there. But this business I'm introducing you to and I'm telling people about this year, it's willable. It's very, very willable. If you want to retire and start, it's something you can call your second or third child. Come, take over this business. It's doing very well now. And this is the percentage for me as you're doing it. You would have built it up. You built a legacy. You build something you can bring your child into, okay? So if you want to be one of the 100 influencers, I'm going to put my number on the screen now. 100 influencers who will use our forever living products. It doesn't matter what your talent, your hobby, your, 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 your abilities are. I will teach you how you can use this product to touch the entire globe. Using social media, attraction marketing and automation is fantastic. You will just sit upon money and make money and touch lives all over. Is that a share that I, I, um, has share that made me to, you know, go into, divert into this. But that will also make me to put my number on the screen. Good evening, Dorcas. You're welcome. So my WhatsApp number, my WhatsApp number is um, plus 234-703-515-1642. Plus two three four seven zero three five one five one six four two. Okay, so that's my WhatsApp number. So you can use it to chat me if you want to get your products. At least you have a testimony life here. These products are fantastic. They work very very well. Hundred percent natural and organic. Grown in very serene environment in Arizona, USA, Dallas, and also in Dominican Republic and all manufactured in netherlands and other places okay and these products go to 171 nations of the world for you so when we talk about global influencers i'm not just saying it for saying sake i have customers all over the world and my forever living company supplies products for me all over they give you a, an e-commerce web site where you can sell and it, they do it for you free of charge they don't talk about, you know, charging you any day for it or any moment for it. I just send my link and people buy from US. I send my link, my web link, and people buy from UK and Nigeria and all over the world. So come and join the 100 influencers, okay? So that you'll be able to retire in styles. All right. So we'll go back. Hello, Dokas. Titi Lala, you're welcome. She was also saying, how do you know you have frozen shoulder? Well, that's what we have been talking about today now. When you have stiffness, I've already told us about the symptoms, but because maybe you're just coming in late, you can watch the replay later, okay? But I'll just run through the most serious symptoms that you can have, okay? I said number one, if you're having persistent stiffness in your shoulder joints, you know, or you're having pain, those are the two most common um symptoms of frozen shoulder so if you're having that you need to first of all go or if you find it difficult to perform your daily tasks and activities like bathing dressing driving sleeping comfortably okay you can also go and um, to check up so those are the most common symptoms and i've already talked about the stages also for us that could lead to the um, that, um risk factors that could lead to frozen shoulders all right so Frozen shoulders treatment options. There are many um, treatment options you can have, but the treatment option will depend on the stage 
of the condition if you're talking about medical treatment very soon i'm going to talk about the natural remedies okay so um it depends on the stage in the early stage if the pain is mild you can just take some kind of natural pain relief or if you're the type that you take paracetamol make sure you don't take paracetamol too frequently you can just take that or over the counter anti-inflammatory tablets also can help you but remember when you take over the counter anti-inflammatory tablets like let me don't call names you could it could also lead to ulcer and things like that so that's why natural means are always very good for you and i've said it common active ha you see this supplement i'm holding active ha is one of the commonest you know and very affordable supplement you can use to actually handle the stage one and stage two of frozen shoulder it will also help to give and um, remove the inflammation in those shoulders to help you all right so keep your shoulder moving that's another thing the doctors will tell you because sedentary keeping your shoulder in one place is one of the things that actually will cause it and then avoid overusing the arm there has to be a moderate balance of the movement of your shoulder or also avoid overdoing repetitive exercises that has to do with the arm it should be comprehensive don't just focus and tilt to one side of exercise then also some physiotherapy can also help um, the flares and the pains to go down and then simple stretch exercises can also be done especially when you're having your shower in the morning when you're brushing your teeth in the morning you know using warm water to also relax the muscle is also another thing that could help and then keeping the body still and then you know crawling the arm up the wall in front of you or outside on saturday we're going to be doing some practical um, exercises that can help frozen shoulder so you can join me on saturday when we'll have our exercise period also all right so diet is also another area we have to look at hello deborah good afternoon from usa deborah how are you good afternoon Odua kekedem says can frozen shoulder cause neck pain of course now if you have um frozen shoulder and it's already causing pain on your shoulder of course you know how true leaf no and um, leaf no pains can go it can go to your neck it's easy easily causes neck shoulder and again your active ha or your forever move will easily help to remove those pains and these are natural 100 percent organic no chemical added it will not cause ulcer like some you know anti-steroid um, um anti um inflammatory um sub um, medicine can cause these ones cannot cause ulcer for you they are natural no side effects okay so a simple reduction in carbohydrates if we're talking about diet simply reducing your carbohydrate intake reducing your saturated and trans fat can do wonders if you're having um stiff shoulder if you're having frozen shoulder you know and then increasing anti-inflammatory foods such as fruits and vegetable seeds and not oily fish you know especially those that are high in omega-3 fatty acids can actually help you very very well to reduce frozen shoulder a lot that reminds me i'm not <laughs> immediately i mentioned that haptics um omega-3 i remember that i'm not chewed my rtc ginica taught me you know i've been wondering how i'll be taking my omega-3 this is rtc very very fantastic um, um omega-3 fish this is made directly from Kamala, if you look at it very well, it says calamari um, fish, very, very good. So I've learned how to chew mine, just I'll put it in my mouth and it will melt and I enjoy it. I put two in my mouth in the morning after food, two in my mouth in the morning, in the afternoon after food, and two in my mouth in the night like I'm doing so after food, it will melt. I'm beginning to love it. Ginika is not online with us today, she's the one that taught me. I'm really, really beginning to love it, okay? All right, so Odwak, yeah, we can. All right, so plan to start a new dietary regime full of healthy foods. Omega-3 supplements like what I have taken. This is one supplement every middle-aged person. Any person who in their family have history of diabetes, history of arthritis, and history of inflammatory diseases should have. 
just make it your daily take it as your daily supplement take it you will be shocked at the wonders it can do is it high blood pressure cholesterol this is fantastic for all of them okay and then try to bring in spices like turmeric ginger garlic into your food nuts like cashew nuts gram nuts then um, pecan nuts chestnuts basil nuts all these nuts are very very good for you walnut and the rest and of course your green leafy vegetables make sure you take them in the portion you're supposed to take them every day and then get a meal plan plan out your meal to remove inflammatory foods and also to increase anti-inflammatory foods in your meal if you don't have and don't know how to do so chat me on my whatsapp number i have a lot of books okay that can give you your meal plan teach you at least how you can start off with the ones i've prepared and then you can now adapt to what you can give yourself in your meal plans very very important then what are the foods you should add let's look at the food you should add to your diet i'm going to run through them very very fast but in my book on healthy heart they are there my book on natural remedies for prevention of arthritis they are there my book on essential solutions for diabetes they are there you know i have several books that can actually help you in prevention and management of some of these things we have mentioned so as i've mentioned before decreasing the amount of inflammatory inflammation is key it's very very key in avoiding and prevention and management and reversal of frozen shoulder so your diet should focus on adding food that are anti-inflammatory with anti-inflammatory properties and this includes like i mentioned before fruits you know like um, berries red grapes like this supplement i'm holding now is one super drink you can have as an anti-inflammatory drink and i always tell people if you're having premenstrual pain or if you're having ovarian cysts we always recommend our berry nectar because the berry nectar is high on you know berries red grapes pomestine and things like that and it can actually help to reduce inflammation for you all right then vegetables with antioxidants we also help rid the body of harmful compounds such as broccoli cauliflower cabbage sweet potatoes very very fantastic antioxidants okay oily fish which contains omega-3 fatty acid nuts seeds avocados and avocado is in season go ahead and get plenty of avocado olive oil very good spices like turmeric ginger full rich in probiotics are also very very fantastic and if you can't get those food get our forever pro b our forever pro b is one supplement i take every morning in an empty stomach anti-aging anti-inflammatory gives you the good bacteria that your body needs removes the bad bacteria and you're what you're supposed to be all right as we are closing the foods you need to avoid okay people with frozen shoulders should avoid and um, like vata aggravating diets and lifestyle practices like frozen foods carbonated drinks fast foods and um, all these foods you buy outside stale food packaged food chips popcorn white flour refined flour very very bad ice cream and any form of stimulant okay like teas with caffeine coffee with caffeine caffeine alcohol all this should actually be avoided and so frozen shoulder is relatively common condition characterized by pain and stiffness of the shoulder or joint and of course i've told you the exact cause is not known but i've told you what you can do to prevent and i've told you what you can do to manage and i've told you what you can do to reverse and if you if you're if you're starting you need medical help also as you put all these natural things i've talked about into practice also make sure you visit your doctor but if you need to reduce any form of pains arthritis or joint pains make sure you get your forever move and your active ha immediately they are going on 25 percent discount tell everybody if you have aged people let them get it okay so thank you all for joining me today if i don't have any question we'll call it a day and then we'll see on wednesday on wednesday see you on wednesday we are doing beautiful recipe again with avocado 
now we are doing recipe you can have for lunch or dinner on wednesday using your avocado peel. remember i told you avocado is in season avocado is very very good it has omega-3 and it has potassium so i'm going to give us some dishes that you can cook we did for some time we're doing another one on wednesday and if you didn't watch last week wednesday so you can go and watch it we made beautiful breakfast avocado egg that you can have and we made avocado um smoothies that you can also have thank you all mary j said how much please chat me on my whatsapp number plus two three four seven zero three five one five one six four two and i'll tell you the prices because i don't know where you're calling in 25 percent discount for you on frozen shoulder supplements that i've shown you today very nectar active ha forever move and your probiotic if you want thank you for joining me thank you for the love thank you for the thumbs up love you bye see you on wednesday 9 a.m bye good night good morning good afternoon <laughs>